Welcome back. In addition to the legacy incidents of imported inflation occasioned by the weakness of the Naira, recent fuel subsidy removal and the liberalization of the foreign exchange rate in Nigeria, with their consequential effect on consumer goods and business operating costs, have continued to cause a rise in Nigeria's inflation rate. International finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joins me now as we keep an eye on the nation's economy. Thanks for joining me, Mokhtar. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, the latest CPI for July report by the NBS, our headline inflation rose from 24.08 in July to 25.80 in August. That is a 172% point, a basis point higher. The eighth consecutive monthly rise in the highest inflation rate experienced in 18 years. What exactly do we have in our hands, Mokhtar? Is it that we'll not be able to afford foods? every day. What is going on really? 25% is so, 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 so high. Yeah, David, um, just, sorry. just when you look at other economy of the world and uh, when you look at African economy, you say, look, we're not doing too badly. But like people will always say, that is the official inflational figure. Mm. That the unofficial one is higher than um, this official inflational figure. And you and I know the, what the challenges are because we import a lot of our products mm. and because of the volatility of the exchange rates, which have gone up. And, and so you are having those inflationary pressures that you are having. And so it, 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 then you mustn't forget the removal of fuel subsidy mm. because our economy is a fuel driven economy because our major means of transportation are driven by uh, PMS. So. Definitely, I think those are what is foreign, the, especially the, 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 the food inflationary pressures mm. and also um, other inflationary pressures, especially for household items. So that's the main reason until we address the volatility in the exchange rate mm. and also um, see stability in our PMS. Maybe we, we get to that point whereby we have a stable um, price. But as long as we keep on Hoving because of the international benchmark of um, crude oil, oh. um, definitely will continue to have this inflation figure. Like people say, like we just said, uh, they feel that the inflation is even higher than what we have. All right. Well, according to the NBS, the food inflation rate like we have talked about in August 2023 was 29.34% on a year-on-year -year basis. I know this was caused by the increases in prices of, uh, you know, staples, really. That's why I'm even bored at bread and cereals, potatoes, yam, coffee, fish, uh, cocoa. You know, these are the things we take on a daily basis. So if we keep on rising like this, what are we going to eat, Mokhtar? Uh, David, uh, just you have to think of what you have to. <laughs> maybe you have to do scale of preference of what you have to eat. Okay. But I, I think um, I expect a slowdown towards the, the second quarter of next year. Oh, that's good. Like news. I said, uh, yeah, if we have this um, stability in the exchange rate, uh, if we have stability in the price of petroleum product, and we expect that to happen oh. when we begin to do local refinery refining of um, uh, food uh, oil. We expect that to start with Dangote refinery sometime between November and December. And if we want to take the government by the by the awards, mm -hmm. but like former President Obasan just said in a, in a recent interview, that would be a miracle. Then the Portaco refinery should, should be working in December. Mm -hmm. So when we have those um, food factors, local refining, then we are not so much um, open to the international price because what will happen in the international price the increment will not be as high as what we will obtain now because we are importing it and paying some charges through the, right. the, through the high sea. Oh. So I think um, that's where I think we'll begin to get uh, stability, especially within our own local consumption, All like right. you talk about cocoa, like you talk about uh, yam, tubers and everything, yes. all those things. So, oh. um, But when you talk about those that we import into the country, especially cereal food, especially wheat, you remember, don't forget we that the wheat issue has fish. to do with it. Yes. Yeah, fish. Oh. The wheat issue also has to do with the challenge that we're having between uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia. Okay. So when you put those ones there, until we address the volatility, the exchange oh. rate, we'll continue to get the hike in those places. All right. Before we move on to talk about the debt stock, uh, let me just... Uh, ask one more question uh, on our, you know, 
inflation rate and all that because over time when uh, the inflation rates uh, keep on higher the central bank in its MPC and everything will increase MPR and uh, stubbornly it, our own inflation will never ever agree okay the seabed is about having a new hemsman at the uh, at the top uh, that's um kadoso a subject to confirmation by the nigerian senate now what would he or what should he be uh, doing in the immediacy when he takes uh, control uh, very uh, very soon um justin yeah economics variables has to do with uh, demands and supply you know that mm, true. um do the right thing then the economy takes its, its, its rightful place. I like quoting what uh, my very good friend Paul Alabi will say. Paul Alabi will say, when you commit uh, spiritual sins, yeah. God will easily forgive you when you pray to God. Yeah. But when you commit economical sin, you have to pay the price for it and mm. you must pay it. So once we have not done wrong, we um, won't get it right. We can get it, when we decide to get it wrong, mm. I mean right, when we have done wrong, we have to pay the price for it. Now, uh, my own challenge with the appointment of um, uh, the new CBN governor, I mean oh. the incoming CBN government yeah. governor, will be the most, you know, the secrecy of the um, CBN is still there, the independence of the CBN. Oh. I hope we don't get to a situation where the executive have a full control of what happened to the CBN because the president has said that he wants a stable exchange rate, he oh. wants to make sure that. Uh, the economy is moving, we want to measure the economy group by 6.7%. We've always talked about the synergy between the monetary policy and the physical policy. So what we need to see is that if the physical side are doing what they should do, the monetary side will also be able to complement the physical side, then we'll see those results. We don't want a situation whereby the executive will now hijack the monetary policy to begin to tell them what to do to synergize with what the executive are doing, even right. if the variables are wrong. Mm. So we need to know that there's the best independence now. Talking about why we've not seen those inflation, because we have not looked at our own peculiar con um, situation. What we are looking at, we are looking at copy and paste. Mm. Now, our situation is different from their own situation because their own situation has to do with just hike in price mm. due to factors that they could control through maybe uh, injection of uh, a little bit palliative into the system mm. or giving a tax bracket to that sector, then the impact will be seen. But our own has to do with production, production inflation pressure, microeconomic inflation pressure, consumer inflation pressure, and also um, the pressure that have to come with exchange rate volatility. Mm -hmm. So you can't do things the way they do. So what we've been doing is, oh, the only way to address inflation pressure is to increase rates. Mm -hmm. But in our own case, when you increase rates, you are even causing challenges to the bank because the non-performing loans get up because our economy is a consumer-driven economy. Mm -hmm. We need to consume. And once we don't have money to consume, the economy begins to shrink and we begin to have the challenge that will come with unemployment. Right. So we need to look at the precarity of our economy before taking economic decisions. So. Mm -hmm. In as much as I agree with what he's, I mean, he's a good um, um, candidate. I mean, I expect a lot from him. But then, he must know that he can't overnight just come into tit it towards the executive, whereby we begin to have rubber stamp like what we have in the in in the National Assembly and the executive. All right. Okay. So let's just move away from that and talk about uh, our debt stock for a few minutes. Well, Nigeria's total public debt increased to 87.38 trillion naira for uh, the second quarter of this year from 49.85 trillion naira in the first quarter. Now, this reflected 75% growth compared to the first quarter of 2023 and 103.92% growth compared to the second quarter of last year when debt stock stood at 49.85 trillion naira and 42.85 trillion naira respectively. I want you to break it down for us. What are we currently dealing with as it is? Because it seems as though we really not, don't have an inkling on how to really manage our debts in the country. We don't, um, Justin, we don't. Um, because um, the previous administration uh, was the worst administration in terms of economic policies. Uh, the only thing they knew how to do best was to borrow for everything 
uh, uh, imaginable. They just want to borrow, borrow to pay salary, borrow to build infrastructure, borrow to do this, borrow to do that, borrow. So what we've seen that they now, uh, they never, when President Buhari was in power, when he traveled after the show of this country, what he's always thinking about is how, so can you give, can, 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 I, can I have some money? Can you borrow me some money? <laughs> but what you see President Tinubu doing now is when he travels abroad, he's saying, can you come and invest in my economy? Can you come and invest so that you can pay me tax, then you can employ my So there's a different strategy. So yeah. the debt profile is not surprising to anybody. When you look at what the previous administration have done, they were just out there to borrow, 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 borrow. Now, what are we into? No, let me tell you, we are not so much into a challenge. The only challenge that we are into is just what we are coping with now, what we are dealing with now. We are coping with it and we are dealing with it. It's that we are not able to, to, to have enough of our resources to bring into capital development. Mm. So what we have now is, 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 is more or less what can only be used to for, 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 for payment of salaries. And then after that, there seems to be nothing. And it's not just with the federal government alone. Even the state government have that same challenge. So we are dealing with a serious monster. About 75 to 85% mm. of our revenue is used to service debt. So it's a big, big challenge. But the whole idea is that why do they give us this debt? Because they know we are capable of paying. Mm. So what I expect President Tinubu to be doing now is to look at them to their face and say, look, it's not sustainable like this. Can we have a dialogue whereby we reshare our debt? We are going to pay, but can we begin to reduce our debt so that we can have money for capital expenditure? All right. That is the only way we have to get out of where we are today. All right. Mukta, on a final note, uh, uh, we were supposed to talk about um, the contributory uh, pension scheme, but uh, we are completely out of time. Maybe uh, another time we'll talk about um, how we've been able to grow that particular sector. Uh, thank you so much for your time on the show for today. My pleasure, Justin. Thank you for having me. All right. My guest has been Mokhtar Mohammed. He is an international um, um, economic um, analyst. And, and that's as much as we can take. Uh, but Business Insights will return again to your screen. Same time, my name is Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now.